So we are going to get a number. So let's do an integer. Of course, I can do something else, but we'll just do integer. My input. So I want to test if my input is odd or even, but if my input is zero, I have to give something else. Yes, even though zero is even, reason being mod two, modulo two um, of zero is zero, but there is contention about this but it is what it is so if what well, how would you go about doing this I want to do something special with zero I know this even it satisfies the modular property but I want to do something special Any thoughts? No, something special. Yeah, put something special in here. How about if my input is zero, I want to say this. Zero is even. Google say so. It must be. It is. <laughs> they say it. It is though. I want to type all that. And now I want to test for a number other than zero. <clears throat> so I'm going to do else if my underscore input got to do modulus so modulo 2 equal to 0 number is even But I can't stop there because if you start with an else if statement, eventually um, C++ and other programming languages will start looking for an else statement. So if all else fails, you need to give another condition or another block and that would be in the else part. So we are testing for multiple conditions. However, we are when we say multiple we're doing more than two. Two conditions we can make do with if and else. So oh And I return zero. Whoa, whoa, whoa. 
people it must be <coughs> did I miss an STD somewhere we need a quote and the quote and that's what Xander is suggesting and it worked so if you are going to break lines and move to separate lines you can only do so with operators for instance um, operators in the sense valid statements I did it with if we know I can't end an if with a semicolon, but if must end with a space followed by a bracket. The same thing if you use a C out, and particularly if you put a quote, excuse me, a string in there, and you break, got to be careful, um, it will throw an error, and it did. So I'm going to start with zero. Enter and it gives me zero as even Google says so it must be they say it it is though um, period give me a number other than 23 47, oh, 47. Number is odd. Even number. Forty six. <laughs> number is even. So this is nice and all. Oh, this is perfectly fine. Now, if the number is zero. then we get the output and it stops as is and if that condition fails it's going for the next block the else if block and if that fails it goes for the very last bit i want you to make a slight change to this code so that if you enter zero um you just abort the mission you don't go past it you just stop right there what should you do think about it So, when I was there, a statement, I did think of one of which you would do. Um, one of you did, someone used break two. Now, naturally, one may want to go and do return zero in that part. Yes? So, when you type return zero, it's going to print and then break them. But it is not necessary to do that return zero part altogether because once it tests for that condition it will stop right there now you may say well what if I switch conditions for instance I tested for the number being even first then moved testing for zero in the else if part would I need written zero no by default um, once a condition passes C++ is not going to move to the next block maybe if maybe else if so when I said make a change you didn't have to make any changes at all but I knew what you would go for and what you did is the return part um, it, it's so, simple activity here. Um, we can make slight modifications to our existing code. Um, same input. If the speed is less than 50, nothing to panic about. So, less than 50. Um, so, don't
panic if it is greater than 110 panic and otherwise it's just false panic good now I just wanted you to try this and most of you got it here is a question could I change the order here in other words can I move the lines inside else in other words line number 21 swap it with line number 18 and the code to do the same Co come again so 50 False panic. One hundred and ten. False panic. I'm not getting done panic, panic at all. Why? I need to go below fifty or above 110. Um, so, another common mistake that people will make, or um, seeing people make, one thing that you should know from this activity is it goes through one block at a time. So it goes in segments. So first it checks if it is equal to 50, no then it'll say if it is greater than 110 provided um, if it is applicable in this case it's not so it'll jump straight down to false panic in all cases but if I entered oops no oh, 50.1 I get false panic why because it's the else statement, but 50.1, um, oh, never mind, you're right, um, let's see. It'll still work, because of the else statement, even if it is um, point 0.1. Here is one change that I want you to make. If it is bigger than 110, and it if exceeds 150, I want you to output, we're so screwed. Good? So, exceeds 110 and if it exceeds 150 you enter so screwed or you output will make it a bit more challenging so if it is 150 you or greater than 150 you type so screwed but if it is less than 150 you're going to type it as um, getting closer to be screwed. 
150. If it is greater than 150, we are so screwed. If it is less than 150, getting closer to be screwed. Uh, but you can't use and. I know some of you did it last time. We can't be using and. Want to add that screw getting screwed part so we'll keep that panic statement there for now what we have to do is put another if statement inside an else if you can put if inside else if you can put if inside um, another if you can create an entire chain of if else if statements within an if statement. Um, I'll do a lengthier one next time for practice. But I want to put this condition inside input greater than 110. So if it is greater than 150, I want to type getting closer to be screwed good I can follow it up with else Danny do we need braces no Over there? No, no, but but when that, that Oh that's screwed, my bad. Yeah. So it's less than one fifty. Thank you. <coughs> Good. Yes. Well, you're thinking, that's the point. So, I am going to enter 111 and Danny's concern was that it's only going to print um, panic. It's not going to test for the condition, but it didn't. Yes. That you're using multiple else if statements, right? Yeah. Well, else if, yeah. yeah, I just wanted to show a nested one, that's all. Okay. We are going to do multiple else ifs. We'll get to that part. Um, so, um, Danny, did you have a question? That's why I asked if you could point both. If I couldn't say the one, you could do it. If I couldn't do it. So, I'll show you how. Um, This time it does panic and getting closer to be screwed. You can certainly move that statement out here below the else because our entire logic is we're going to test for each condition in if, else if, or if all else fails, we'll go to else. So why bother? having that panic statement in the beginning. We'll move it to the end. It should skip at else, but it didn't. So is there a way to get rid of not printing panic? How about return zero 
return zero. Will that work? One hundred and eleven. Did it work? Yes. So the point of this exercise demonstrates that even if you have if else, when you have other statements, it, the compiler is going to execute those statements. In other words, as it goes along, it is going to test for the if block. If that block fails, it is going to go for that block, but it is not going to automatically stop because there are statements following if. So if, else if, else if, else block is a component of its own, whatever its output uh, will be, it's going to work, will print, but it will proceed past that else. It is not going to stop. How can we make it stop? Using a simple return zero. Yes, there is break, and we can get to those um, later. Yes? Huh? Yeah. That's for a loop. We haven't gotten there. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. So, any questions in if, else, if, return? No?